preview for this coming weekend, but that's going to be kind of short because we've only got a few shows. So if you didn't know, we started doing these pre-recorded. We used to do them live, uh, but the way that YouTube works with our algorithms, they like pre-recorded content better than lives. So we now do one live a week on Tuesday nights where we do wrap up the weekend shows the, the week before. And then we have our Behind the Bikini podcast. And then we have our pre-recorded, which is what we've got going on right now. So before we get into all of that, if you'd like to come and work with me, Sean'sCouturecuties.com is where you got to go. You can see that on our ticker right here below me, right there, Sean'sCouturecuties.com. Um, or you can go to our Cutie Boutique, which I'll sh show that particular QR code in just a moment, but you can also get that link in the description box below here on YouTube. And then up here, QR code, we've got CCTS 2024. It is our ninth year running with an all-female focused weekend we are almost at the end of our early bird ticket launch. So this is the time frame where you can get your tickets super discounted. Check it out if you haven't already. We have top Olympians, coaches, sponsors, all the people that you need in order to have a successful year ahead as a competitor. Kicks it off first thing in January. Um, it's an amazing like bonding weekend, but it's also one of those weekends that really sets you up for the year to come. So check it out if you haven't already right there or Click on the link in the description box below too. Then if you want to work with me, you can also go to our Kitty Boutique. So Sean Store Cuties works or our Kitty Boutique works too. There you can find our retail. You can find posing, hair and makeup, the shows that we're at, uh, suits, everything. It's all right there. So there's another QR code for you or again, link in the description box. All right. Now that's done. Let's get rid of these so that they're not distracting for the rest of this live stream. Well, it's not live anymore. I'm so used to saying live. Eh, it is what it is. You guys know. Let me get rid of this. How do I get rid of this? Ah, there we go. <laughs> okay. So we are officially into Olympia hype time. Uh, the last and final shows to qualify for this year's Olympia were this past weekend. So now everything from here forward qualifies for next year. This weekend, there's a handful of shows, but none of them are here in the States. Uh, so we're not going to really preview them too much because I feel like they're going to kind of be self-evident who's going to win. <laughs> so let's pull up um, the shows themselves. So we have the Fashion Street Fit Parade Pro. Um, this is in Hungary. It's actually a pretty decent list uh, when we're looking at bikini here. Decent size list, which most of the European shows this year have been. They've been pretty big. Um, I'll be honest, I don't know a lot of these names in this list. I may have seen some of them throughout the year. Um, I don't know of a lot of them that have placed top five. I didn't go through all of them because we honestly have bigger fish to fry with the Olympia coming up. So, um, you know, looking at this right out of the gate, I think our front runner here is going to be Valeria Val right here. So she is qualified for the Olympia already, um, which is right here. She qualified last year as well. So she won this show right here, which is the Europa Pro right here. Um, for this particular show, I felt like she came in a little bit fuller. Um, Posing was a little bit better, still need some posing tweaks, still need some presentation tweaks. You know, when it comes to these European competitors, a lot of them have a different style than what we're used to here in the U.S. It works when they're over in the in Europe, not so much when they get here to the States. When she was here competing in the States, she would get, you know, second call out, first call out, that kind of thing. But she wasn't placing uh, top. She wasn't placing the top three. I think the highest she got while she was here in the States was fourth. Um, let me pull up the thing. Yeah, fourth at the Flex Pro, which actually that's not even, that wasn't even in the States, was it? That was overseas. Yeah. Yeah, that was overseas. So I take that back. The best that she placed here in the States was sixth at the Nevada State Pro. And she placed 10th in Pittsburgh and 12th in New York. So, you know, the, 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 the standards are a little bit different in Europe than they are here in the States. Plus the quality and the depth of competitors is a little bit different as well. We're going to get into that in just a minute. I'm going to talk about that going into Olympia and how that's going to make a difference at this year's Olympia. Okay. Um, but she's a tall competitor, 5'11", um, 
main thing that she needs to work on in general is just balancing her back pose with as far as what she needs to grow. She needs to grow her glutes. Um, her legs are not overpowering by any stretch of the imagination. I think her legs are where they need to be, but it, on her frame, she just needs to pull her glutes up a bit. So here's a back shot for her. So again, at this show, I felt like she was a little fuller and softer than what she typically does, which is a good thing. Um, she tends to come in too conditioned. I mean, you can even see here, this could be the lighting on the show too, but you can see here, she's got some feathering in her calves, you know? So that tells me she's still got some conditioning issues here, which tells me that when she comes to the States, that still is going to be an issue. But going into this show that's coming weekend in Hungary, she is likely the favorite to win. I don't see why she wouldn't be. She's the only one on, on the list that is qualified for the Olympia at this point. Um, so I'd be curious to see if she brings the same package or if she tries some new things as far as getting herself ready to, uh, to be a potential threat at the Olympia. Um, but yeah, I do think, think that she's going to just probably take it most likely just my two cents. Um, and then the other show that I was going to talk about real briefly, uh, before we get into some Olympia stuff is the, um, Guadalajara show, which is right here. So we're back to only a handful of people here in wellness. And as you can see, I have Victoria here highlighted because she just won over at Legions. So I imagine she will likely be taking the win here too. Legions was her pro debut. This is a much smaller, less competitive lineup right here. I imagine she's going to take the win. So she'll probably get back-to-back -back wins and she's qualified for the Olympia next year. Here, um, I would guess that she's probably going to do a few things to try to improve her posing, her package, her overall presentation. I think that her physique is pretty decent, especially being brand new pro. Um, I think her physique came in pretty well, but I, where she can make some improvements between now and the Olympia is on her presentation aspect of this. I, you know, I wasn't a huge fan of the suit, the makeup, all those kinds of things. Her posing's a little bit wonky. Um, so these are some areas where she could definitely try some new things this coming weekend, um, see how they look, you know, and, and better prepare herself to go into the Olympia um, in a couple of weeks. Uh, we are, what are, how many weeks out are we from the, the Olympia right now? One, two, three. We're three weeks out from the Olympia right now. So we're going to see a few more shows come. We're going to see a few more people get on stage as far as getting warmed up for the Olympia. So I'm not doing picks yet. I'm not doing my top tens or anything like that. But I did want to. I did want to address something um, and kind of break some things down a little bit. Uh, one of the comments that came into my Instagram a couple of weeks ago was, "Why don't they take the Olympia outside of the U.S. Because there's so many people that are in the top ten that are not from the U.S." Well, first of all, whoever wrote that particular um, question in was only looking at bikini. They weren't looking at the other divisions. We have several other divisions besides just bikini, uh, not just the women. We have men, too. So by and large, the majority of the competitors that are qualified for the Olympia are from the United States. So that's the biggest thing. With that, there's been a shift in the last year of where the shows actually are. Um, I'm going to kind of show you a breakdown of the competitors for these divisions and why this, why this makes a difference um, and why this is going to be something that we have to be paying attention to. Okay, so here's our list, first of all. So what I did, this is our bikini list right here. Okay, we've got 29 people that are qualified from outside of the U.S. And this is bikini. Okay, so all of these women are not from the United States and they're qualified for the Olympia. We have 23 that are from the United States qualified for the Olympia, okay? Um, we have wellness below that. I'm gonna get into wellness in a minute. You'll see what I'm talking about once we get there. Um, so this is why, you know, and this is, this is just a subset. This is gonna kind of be the same thing across the board except for wellness. Wellness is the one oddball of the divisions. And we're gonna talk about that in a minute. Um, this is kind of a subset of all the divisions. So the majority of the competitors are from the United States that have qualified. And beyond that, when we look at the 29 girls here that are qualified from outside of the US, if they've got a little asterisk next to their name right here, that means that they actually compete here in the United States and one shows here in the United States, okay? Um, now with that, as I'm looking at Ivana, I think she won a show here in the US. I'm pretty sure she did. She competed a lot in the US, was top, um, top call-ups in the US, just so that I'm not talking out of my but right now I'm going to pull her up 
and make sure that she actually won a show here in the U.S. Let's see. I think she did. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. So that is the Big Man Pro. She did win that. Um, well, they don't have her. They have her name all different. Well, regardless, she's competed a lot here in the U.S. She's gotten real close to winning in the U.S. if she hasn't already. I can't verify right now if she has or not. So um, just use that as a caveat because um, they got her name spelled wrong. So I'm not going to spend a ton of time looking it up. So anyway, um, she's a top competitor regardless. She was here. She was in the Arnold, all that kind of stuff. So she's one to definitely be looking at. She's the, the anomaly over here, right? So um, the rest of them here... Uh, Phoebe won here in the States. Maureen, obviously, she won the Olympia. Jennifer, obviously, she won the Olympia. Um, Laura Lee, obviously, won the uh, the Arnold. Um, Issa, she won Texas. Um, Texas, right? Yeah. And Ellie, she won here. She won, she's won the DC Pro a handful of times, but I can't remember what she won this year. Um, and Yulia, obviously, she won uh, just a couple of weeks ago in Arizona. So, you know, and I didn't mark off Alessia because she didn't win here in the States here this year, but she has in the past. Uh, she won in Japan or Thailand or something. She won in one of the Asian countries this past year. She qualified. So that being said, even among the 29 women that are from outside of the U S and technically like Yulia lives here in the U S, even though she's from Romania, you know, um, Maureen has lived here. Jennifer lives here. Laura Lee lives here, you know, all of this. So, you know, my point is even among the one, the 29 here, the majority of these girls have qualified here in the U S versus when we look at the 23 girls that are from the United States, the only one that is qualified outside of the U S is Roxana, which I believe Roxana is not originally from the U S to begin with. I think she is now, but I think she's not to begin with. Um, and she's the only one among the U S competitors that qualified outside of the US, right? So what does that mean? That means that our quality here is a lot higher and a lot stronger here, here in the US, right? Um, so there's no way, like even if you look at our top countries here, probably our top country on this list up here is probably Brazil. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six girls from Brazil. So you couldn't take the the Olympia to Brazil. You only got six women that are actually from there. And they didn't qualify in these high-level shows here in the U.S. They qualified outside of the U.S., right? So, you know, the, the, there's these are the things that you have to look at when we're talking about the people stepping on the Olympia stage and the quality of the competitors stepping on the Olympia stage. Do we see anybody in this list outside of our obvious people like our – you know, our, if we take, if we go outside of the people that have, that have won shows here in the U.S., look at the girls here on the outside of the U.S. that have not won a show here. Is there anybody here that you can see getting up in that top 10? I mean, I'm looking at it right now and I don't think so. You know, and that's not to take away, but that's to say that the quality of competitors, the criteria is harder here in the U.S. The amount of competitors is harder here in the US, right? But the reason we're seeing so many girls from outside of the US actually qualify now is because we've had an uptick in shows that are outside of the US. There are more shows that are popping up in Europe now, and then there's shows that are being taken away here in the US, right? So we're seeing winners on these shows kind of, and I hate to say this because it sounds really, it sounds like mean girl, but kind of by default, if these women were forced to come here to compete, they may not qualify, right? They may get beat out by people here in the United States. Okay. So when we're talking about taking the Olympia outside of the U S I just don't think that that is a good idea by any stretch of the imagination, just from a numbers standpoint. Now ask me again in 10 years, maybe different, but right now where you qualify, where you qualify for the pro league not even the Olympia, where you qualify from the pro league is here in the U.S. 
there's a lot more dense population of competitors here in the United States than there is in any other country. Okay. With the exception of wellness. Okay. So wellness is the one division where we don't see that. Okay. So let's go down to the wellness girls. I did the same thing here. Okay. Then the difference in wellness, if you look at the ladies that are qualified, there's only seven that are qualified that are from the United States. Only seven. There's nine that are qualified from Brazil alone in wellness. Okay. Now, when you look at these women that are qualified from Brazil and the asterisk next to their name, that asterisk means that they qualified in the States. So these Brazilian women, out of all these Brazilian women here, there's only two that qualified outside of the United States. They all qualified here in the States, whether it be through the Olympia, Francielli won it, Isabel in second, right? And then Angela third, fourth, whatever, third, I think it was third. Um, or the fourth, I don't know, forgot the, the placings exactly. Um, now I, I, I have the caveat here of Nerid. Naradili, Naradil, Naradil. I'm sorry. She won the Masters Olympia. So that's how she qualified. So um, so technically she didn't win inside the United States, but it was the Masters Olympia. So, um, you know, Isa Maria, she qualified in Texas. Uh, Rayanne qualified in Tampa. Giselle qualified in Pittsburgh and New York. So again, they qualified in these, these higher tiered shows. So I bring this up for a reason. Okay. When we look down at the, at the U.S. competitors, um, you know, and elsewhere. The U.S. is a powerhouse when it comes to producing quality competitors, as we talked about with bikini. This is one of the reasons why I feel like sometimes we think the criteria for wellness is kind of all over the place here in the U.S. Because this particular division was built on the criteria of the Brazilian body. I mean, it's pretty clear when you look at who's been qualified for this particular division in the Olympia, where this body type came from. It came from Brazil. Okay. So I think one of the reasons why we're having issues with um, women actually hitting the criteria here in the U.S. is because it wasn't built on a United States kind of body. It was built on a Brazilian genetics kind of body. So that's why we're seeing these Brazilian women taking over this particular division, right? So that's why I think a lot of times we see women here in the U.S. win their pro cards and feel like they can't compete once they get up to the up to the pro stage because they're going up against women who were genetically gifted for this sport. I mean, when you look at it, Francielli is just born that way. I mean, yes, don't get me wrong. She's putting in a ton of work. I don't want to discount any of that. But a lot of that is because of how she was actually born. Right. And we talk about this all the time when it comes to bodybuilding is a genetic sport. Right. So in the process, women here in the U.S. are trying to catch up to the Brazilian bodies through other means. And it just doesn't work. You just can't beat when a woman is built like that, when she's born like that and she works hard and she puts all the time, and the effort and everything into it. You, you're just not going to be able to beat it. It's going to be really, really difficult to beat it. So we've talked about this. Uh, throughout the year and talked about why these wellness shows aren't taking off and why there's less and less competitors showing up. And I believe this is why. I believe the reason why is because the actual division itself was built on a Brazilian frame, Brazilian body. We know it was. And women here in the U.S. just don't have that body. They're just not, bo not born that way. And the majority of the pros that are being made are being made here in the U.S., so what do you do? Right. And I'm really asking that I'm asking, what do you do? How do you make this particular division more popular when the most densely populated country, when it comes to competitors, doesn't have that shape, doesn't have that genetic frame? What do you do? Comment. I really want to know, what do you think? How do we make wellness become as popular as bikini? How do we do it? Comment. Tell me. Tell me your thoughts. Maybe you can tell me something that I haven't thought of. Um, in general, my two cents is that we just need to reward women that are bottom heavy, like we talked about, that fit the criteria, but not quite so conditioned, not quite so hard, not quite so big. 
right? Go a little softer. Um, I'm okay with going a little softer as long as the body fits the fits the criteria. Like that Mia Samuels, I think she has a beautiful frame for wellness. Um, she's got more muscle than bikini, quite obviously more muscle than bikini. And she's a little bit softer, which I think is a great look. I think that's the direction you go. That's my two cents. Um, I say all this because I like to see the division get bigger than it is because it's not, it's not growing, right? So I want to see it grow. And the only way that we can do that is to make it attainable for women that are not genetically blessed, like the Brazilians are genetically blessed. <laughs> so with that, I just wanted to bring that up. Um, and I also wanted to talk about, like I said, when we're talking about where the, the Olympia could potentially go in the future, um, I believe that it's going to have to take an act of a lot of shows in other in like other countries to make the Olympia be something that could be popular elsewhere. I just don't think it would work elsewhere. I just don't. Uh, when you look at the numbers, it's pretty clear why. I mean, we're looking at the total number of bikini competitors here and half of them reside here in the States. And again, even when we're looking at the 29 that are from outside the U S half of these girls that I mentioned do live here in the U S not half, you know, I'm exaggerating, but you know, Yulia lives here. Like I said, um, uh, Laura Lee, Jennifer, Maureen kind of splits time. Um, you know, they all live here a lot of, and if they don't live here, they come here a lot. You know what I mean? So, um, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And that also brings up and begs the question, do we continue to create more and more shows overseas where the co competition isn't quite as deep, isn't quite as good? Now, they are getting better. The criteria is getting better. But it's pretty clear that even when the powerhouses from Europe come here to the States, they don't do as well across the board. With your exceptions of your Ivanas, you know, your exceptions of your Phoebe. And the reason why they do well is because they come here and they compete here a lot. So they've actually changed and fit the criteria because they come here to the States and compete. They don't just stay overseas and do it, right? They're coming here. They're coming here. So again, comment, tell me, do you think that it would ever be possible for the Olympia to be successful outside of the United States? Keeping in mind that when you qualify for the Olympia, the Olympia pays for your room, gives you per diem, gives you um, credits to your travel, all of that. So keeping in mind that the Olympia itself pays for the athletes to be there. Also think about all the other things that are tied into the Olympia. The Olympia amateur goes on prior to the Olympia. Those are almost all United States people, right? There's a lot of moving parts here. And I just don't see it being successful outside of the U.S. But again, I could be wrong. Maybe there's something I'm not paying attention to. Maybe something I'm not thinking of. Comment. Let me know. All right. So that is your preview for today. Uh, again, this is going to be a pretty eh, kind of weekend for shows. That's because we're ramping up for the Olympia in three weeks. Also, comment. Let me know if you're going to be at the Olympia. I will be there. I am planning on doing my live commentary on my Spotify uh, from the audience in prejudging. Um, and so I'll let you know my, my two cents on each of the divisions we'll do. We'll definitely do bikini and wellness for sure. hundred percent. And if you're going to be there, say hi, cause I'll be there all week. Well, not all week, but I'll be there on Thursday till Sunday. So I'm going to be a prep. This will be the first time that I'll be, you know, I'll be two weeks out. So this is the first time I've ever gone to the Olympia in prep. So this is going to be a unique experience for me. Now, one thing I'm very happy about is that the Hyatt there in Orlando does have a fantastic fitness facility. So I will be able to get my cardio, my training in, no problem. Uh, but I have a feeling I'm going to be running between the show and going and doing my training. It's going to be an interesting few days. So uh, my coach will be there. I'll be able to check in in person, which is awesome. Um, but it's going to be <laughs> it's going to be a different experience for, for sure for the Olympia. So again, if you're going to be there, comment, let me know. I would love to see you, love to meet you. Um, if you're one of my girls, I'd love to see you. Obviously, give you a big hug, all of that. Even if you're not one of my girls, I'll see you, give you a big hug. Um, and like I said before, if you want to come to Cuties Cocker on the Stage, here's our QR code. There you go, up in the corner. Um, almost sold out, sold out on those uh, those early bird tickets. If you want to come work with me, seanstrowcuties.com, or you can go to our cutie boutique. Again, all of these links are down below in the description box. Make sure that you have subscribed to our channel because we do 
one live a week, two uploads a week. So you want to be subscribed. You got all of our, your cardio theater, uh, turn on notifications. So, you know, when we go live and you can comment and come on and talk with me, I definitely make it interactive when we do lives and that's it. I guess have a great weekend. I'll be back on live on Tuesday and let me know in the comments, all your thoughts. All right, guys. Bye.